Good afternoon, and welcome to A Right Now Word. I'm Apostle Ann Jackson, and I'm very happy to be back with you today. On last Sunday, or last Sunday, we talked about single women in ministry, and we want to continue that just a little bit more this Sunday. And I hope, I hope you enjoyed last Sunday as much as you will enjoy it this Sunday. We have some very special guests today. We have returning with us Apostle Or Minor, and our very special guest is going to be Prophetess Rhonda Phillips of Dare to Outdo Yourself Ministry. I am so excited because we're going to talk about some things today I think will bless your hearts as well as encourage your hearts and make you more aware of what God is really doing in the lives of women, many women. So we're very happy to have you with us again. And don't forget, if you see something that interests you, uh, you see the uh, email address on the end of the screen or you see the phone number, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Write us a call, drop us a card or something, and we'd love to, love to uh, fellowship with you. Again, welcome to Right Now Word. I'm Apostle Ann Jackson. We're going to start this morning talking this afternoon. We're talking about a scripture found in Genesis 1 and 27, and it says, "So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created them." Now, when we talk about women in ministry. We talk about things that act, people that actually God created for his own glory. And we have so many women that God are calling right now into ministry that really, really want to, uh, are very excited about doing what God has called them to do. And a lot of them have not been given the opportunity. But for those that have been given the opportunity, we want you to hear from those women today. From an, another single point of view, uh, again, I'm gonna ask Apostle or mine again. Apostle Minor, thank you for joining us today. Very happy to have you back. Such a pleasure to be back with you. Amen. We talked on last week about uh, single women in ministry and how it affects you in ministry as a single woman. Uh, would you kind of elaborate on it just a little bit more this Sunday for our audience? Well, being single in ministry, um, there are a lot of uh, exciting things that you go through in being single because you're able to focus on the things of God uh, more, more, you know, better. However, um, it has its um, challenges as well because there are times that as a single woman you feel lonely there are times you want that male companionship but you don't want to get out of the will of God you're allowing God to direct whomever it is he has for you to come to you in the time of waiting for um, that gentleman you're busy doing the things of God you're busy focusing on God and preparing yourself for when he comes on board, uh, that you'll be able to be the right person for that man. Now I want to uh, elaborate on something you say, you know, because I'm, what I'm hearing and what I'm not hearing, uh, I'm assuming that you don't have children. I have no children. Uh, so do you think it would be, uh, now, I, I, really, I don't know if you can answer that, because I have, t I have children, and uh, I'm now single in ministry, and it has not had a powerful effect on me, but it has had an effect raised my children, because there were some certain things that I want to do for God that, at, at times I was not able to do because there was the cooking and the cleaning and doing the homework and stuff like that that mm -hmm. prevented me from doing all the things that I need to do for God. So from, from that perspective, uh, I'm, can I assume that you don't have children? I have no children. And so now, how would you have, would you have felt the same way had you had children or uh, is this part of just being a single woman without children? How would you have adapted to that, that uh, format? For me, not having children, um, the way that I feel now and have felt, I would definitely feel that way. If I had children, I may not would have been as lonely, you know, I would have something to uh, direct my energies toward uh, because I would have to do, the, of course, as you first stated, the cooking, the cleaning, um, and all of that good stuff, putting the kids to bed and everything else. But being single, having no children, you know, I'm just basically um, kind of alone, having nothing to really gear my energies toward. So um, it has a different effect, I feel, you know, without children. And I'm looking at the scripture in the book of Joel where it says, In the last days that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and his sons and daughters, they would prophesy, they would bring forth the word from the Lord, they would be able to encourage uh, the men and women of God in this hour. And even talk about children and how, how how important they're going to be in this hour as well, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of intelligent children 
that God, you know, God is also raising up in this hour. And, and again, I want to say thank you for sharing that. Amen. But then we have uh, a married woman perspective. We have with us a prophetess, Rhonda Phillips. And, and I know that she has some challenges probably too with ministry having, because she has children. And I'm assuming you have children. I hope you have children. And would you kind of like tell us how it feels for you being in ministry as a, 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 single, a, a mad woman from that, that perspective? Well, first, thank you, Apostle Jackson, for having me on your show today. It's uh, truly uh, an honor to be here. Thank you. Uh, well, I will first start off and let you know that um, I am married. My husband and I, uh, together, we, we've been married. We, we are married for 23 years. We've been together for a total of 26 years. But uh, we have a blended family. And so between us, we have four children. Um, but they're all adult children now. So, but I will share that um, from the time that uh, my my children, um, when they were younger, and I was you know in ministry while they were still at home because they're all adults now, um, I, I made an effort to uh, include them you know in with me in terms of uh, doing ministry. So they were with me. Um, you know, if there were there were events that pertain to uh, women's events that um, I didn't you know, feel that I would, you know, be as available to them during the time that my husband, all, he always was there to, you know, make sure that, that they were with him. But I will say that uh, my husband and I worked together as a team as it pertained to the children, and he had an understanding of what God called me to do as it pertained to ministry, so that worked out in that regard. And I do think that that's very important that as a single woman, entertaining the fact that someday God will uh, bless, you know, be a blessed woman with the husband, that there is a, a, a meaning of the minds there because ministry is so important. It's going to take the two people working together to make sure they can master that, that part of the call. Because uh, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? And the agreement part has got to be that uh, because they both love God so much that neither one will be able to handle the other one from actually participate in the call that God has upon their lives. And, I, and in looking at um, uh, Genesis, the first chapter, verse 27, it says he created men and women in his own likeness. That means that we're both able to participate in the things of God. And God does not challenge one, or the, one against the other, but he come together, you know? And so that makes it so helpful in having children. And I have two adult children that I raised in ministry me uh, as a single person as well. Uh, so my children now, my, as a matter of fact, my daughter is my assistant pastor. Uh, so they, they were you know, raised, had pretty much raised me in the church. But when you come down to being having that, that uh, masculine versus that, that, that feminine trait and the character in the gospel, how does it affect the woman when, when, when she's not able, she's called or she marries somebody that does not participate in ministry uh, from a single perspective or from a married perspective? And from this married perspective, we know that uh, Brother Phillips is right. He entertains and engages with his wife, but from the single perspective, I think it's really important that the Bible says, "Whom God calls, He, he qualifies him." But He said, "A man that findeth uh, a wife findeth a good thing." So, how does that, you know, how, when it comes down to ministry, how does that blend into ministry? He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. How do you think it blends into ministry? How it affects the ministry as a whole? Apostle Minor. Well. And thinking about that, um, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Um, being single in ministry, you have to make yourself available, but not go out of the reins um, of you being available. And what I mean by that, um, there's some that can be one thing in the church, but then something totally different outside of the church. You must keep a balance at all times that when he finds you, he will find you in the right manner to which God would have you to be. And then the two of you can be able to blend together, um, becoming one, you know, should marriage take place. Now you're speaking about the right manner. Now what manner are you? When I say manner, I'm speaking in terms of the fact that, you know, there are some women um, that I've had an experience with in times past, friendship-wise, where in, in church, they're portraying one um, attitude, one manner, 
but then outside of church is something totally different, more on a loose base to be able to catch the man. And you've got if okay, now let's concentrate that, that loose base that catches the man. Uh -huh. um, are you referring to they have, think they have to go to nightclubs or be in different places just to catch that man? But Being in different places, yes, to catch that man. And some of the places that they are in uh, would not be becoming of a minister, would not be becoming of a saint, uh, woman wise, um, because. Where they are out there, um, you'll find more sinners there than anything, and, and the things that they're doing uh, to get the attention of the man is not becoming of a child of God. Okay, so that, that, that you, you're talking about from the perspective of the woman finding the man, but I'm talking about as far as the man finding a woman mm -hmm. uh, and how uh, that adversely affects her personal ministry as a, as opposed to her going to those places. I'm saying, what about if she finds him in church, in the choir, mm -hmm. uh, on the on Deacon Ministries, or on the, that type thing? How does it affect, how would it affect you as a, as a single woman? To, what would you expect to find your Mr. Wright? <laughs> I would hope to find Mr. Wright in church. Um, he doesn't have to be a minister for him to be uh, Mr. Wright. Um, he can very well be just a member of the church or a deacon or, or whomever, a choir member, um, but to know that he is the right person to which God has sent for me. Um, I feel like there would be a confirmation within the inside of me to let me know that that is the one and my responsibility would be to wait on him to approach me. Okay, and I know you're gonna say, well, where this, where this question is coming from, but I'm listening and I'm saying, can you not? Can they not find you in a nice restaurant? Yes, they a can. A nice movie, a nice you know gathering, singles gathering or something. Yes, they can. Certainly can. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to always be in church, um, restaurant as you forestated, um, a singles gathering. Yes, um, or even walking up and down the street. Wow, well, I had a friend one time I wanted to share with you. Uh, that was uh, her husband found. Well, she found him, and they found her. I guess they kind of found each other. And um, she, uh, she said God spoke to her, and uh, he was on the telephone. And back in that day, they had telephone booths. Mm -hmm. uh, and she saw him. And she said God said you're going to be my husband. And uh, it's been 42 years now, and they're still married. Wow! Wow! And so, uh, the, you know, he he wasn't in a restaurant. He wasn't in church. He was at telephone. Wow! <laughs> and so. There are some good, there are some good men that there's still good men left in the world. What you're saying, mm -hmm. and they can find you from any, you know, any place. Uh, Prophet Ronnie, talk to us about that. Yes, well, you know, I will share that my husband and I did not meet in church. Um, when we first met, uh, I was at work. Uh, he would, he had his own business, and he came in to meet with my manager. And um, when he said he, he saw me, uh, he, he knew that. You know, I was the most beautiful person or woman he'd ever seen. Wow. He, he knew that one day this I would become his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said that one day I would become his wife, but I, you know, I, I didn't have the same, uh, it wasn't the same effect that I had toward him when I saw him. I was just busy working and, you know, he, you know, he was very attractive and he was kind of, he, you know, he was a, a gentleman. But you know he he would he had on work clothes you know he didn't look you know he didn't have on a suit and tie or anything like that he was you know he had been busy working and he had paint all over his clothes and you know but he was a gentleman and you know so when he approached me after he had his meeting you know he you know said that he thought I was very beautiful and he gave me his business card and said he would love to take me out to lunch one day and you know basically the rest is history from there you know so we had an opportunity to, to get to you know talk on the phone talk on the phone for hours as if we were in high school you know before we even went out on our first wow. date you know but we had we just we discovered we had a lot in common in terms of similar interests and you know just you know uh, things that we wanted to pursue and overall he was just uh, it was like I knew him, it, it seemed like I had known him for years um, in the way that we had our conversation. So I really enjoyed talking to him. And, and then of course, when we actually went out, when I first date my son, um, my, at the time when I had I just myself and my son, he was with us. 
on our first date. So we went out to lunch and we went to the mall and got ice cream. You know, that was it. You know, that was our, so our first romantic. date. But, you know, <laughs> you know, and, you know, but I just say that to say that, you know, he saw something in me. I was, it, you know, I, I, you know, before meeting my husband, I, I was already saved. So, um, you know, it wasn't like that was something that I grew into later on or anything like that. But he saw the God, the God in me. And that was, I would say, what attracted him, uh, you know, to me as well in terms of him being a gentleman. You know, he, you know, he was, you know, someone who also, he was someone who also was was um, saved. But we, we at the time, we just, you know, we, we came together in that way. I, I like what you said. You said having common interests. I think that's very, very important in any relationship to have common interests. Um, and I would hope that the next person God sends into my life would have a common interest with me because I enjoy singing. Uh, so I'm looking for somebody that God will send to my life that also enjoys singing, that has a has a, 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 a love for music, uh, church. Or, uh, I'm looking, you, know, you had this idea, you've just painted this idea picture that I would love to have in my life, you know, and it's so romantic. And the common interests and common goals are so important mm -hmm. because I found that they have a lot of, uh, I've, had, I've heard many testimonies about how women, women and what men alike have been blessed and not be in church, but later on engaged themselves into church and became some very, very, very uh, active stewards in church and they loved, loved God. Uh, I was listening to Apostle Mine as well and they have some awesome women of God, like Joyce Meyer. And they have um, they have um, Paula White. They have they have so many Marilyn Hickey. Uh, I met an awesome woman of God, Dr. Rosa Herman, uh, in Fayetteville. Well, so they have some awesome women of God that have husbands that work very, very, very closely in ministry. And I do believe in my heart that when that man finds that woman, she should find some type of medium or balance or, or or somebody that she can pattern a model of her life after that would kind of like enhance her walk with God so she could see how other women walk their ministry, how they formulate their ministries together. Okay, in Second Timothy chapter uh, 3, I just want to share this verse of scripture with you. And uh, I love it. It says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teachings, rebuking, correcting, and train in hope and righteousness. You know, down through the years I've heard uh, that God can't use women in ministry, that he won't use women in ministry because the ministry was designed for men. Uh, I beg to differ, but I do know that God can use, them, to use women and they have been super in the gospel, very encouraging. And, and it's, I think it's so important that whether we're married or single, that we recognize our places in the gospel because every, the scriptures are already there, the word of God is already there to enlighten our hearts. So now we have a lot of women that are out there probably watching this broadcast today that are in ministry, we have some uh, are single women, we have some women that have been divorced, we have some women that have been widowed, they have some women that uh, are just, just in waiting. And I know that some of them are out there right now, and I know you're listening to this broadcast about uh, women in ministry, period, and how effective you can be in ministry. And it's so it's so important that we follow after the, the orders of God, the oracles of God, and we follow after the rulings of God so we will know where our rightful place is. And the Bible did say a man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. So in other words, when you don't have to look for a man, they will, they will find you. But they, it's important they find you in the proper place. And that place is living a godly life. Uh, living a, a righteous life, wouldn't you not agree? So it's important that we recognize that if he's going to find us, and I, heard, I think I heard Apostle Minor said, he needs to find you doing the same thing and not changing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to mm -hmm. be saved, if, if you find a man, a man finds you and he can easily pull you away from God, then you got to know that's not the right one. Mm -hmm. Because God will never desecrate his word uh, concerning that relationship. And so, I, I do believe that that God is, you know, he, he inspires marriages and He blesses marriages. But I do believe that sometimes we call ourselves because we're so lonely, mm -hmm. and you've got to be lonely but not desperate. 
And the lonely part will cause you not to be in the will of God, but that desperate part will cause you to go into another place that you would not ordinarily go if you had wait, really waited on the Lord. So in, in lieu of that, uh, uh, Prophet Phillips, how could you in this hour encourage young married women that are just starting in ministry, just getting married, and just start, because there are a lot of young people now, uh, young women that are in ministry, not to, I'm just saying like in the early 20s, and sometimes younger than that, that are just getting into marriage, and are just getting into ministry, and have never been married to, how would you encourage that woman today? That's a very good question. Um, well, first and foremost, I would say that, you know, when, when God calls you into ministry, uh, of course, you, you want to answer the call and be obedient to God in that regard, but you want to also discuss with your husband. I know that for myself, my husband was very supportive of, you know, me starting out in ministry. He actually encouraged me to go forward, and, you know, I, I couldn't be the woman that I turned out to be as it came to ministry without the support of my husband. But also, you know, on the flip side of that, marriage is ministry. And so I had to make sure that there, there was that balance, as you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, um, and making sure that before I go out and try to minister to, other, to the needs of other people, I have to minister to the needs of my husband, mm -hmm. to the needs of my family first. And so that was very important for me, and to make sure that, you know, I take care of myself, you know, and have my relationship with, with God intact, but making sure that before I, I put myself in a position of, you know, trying to go out and, and call myself to be someone who's doing ministry and being there for other people, am I, am, am I there for my family? Am I there for my husband? Am I meeting, you know, the needs of my, my children at the time when they were in the home? But my husband has a ministry, you know, so I have to make sure that I'm, I'm there. You know, I, the first thing when I wake up in, in the morning, you know, I ask him how's he doing? You know, you know I, I greet him, you know, in the way that um, I, I, I'd love to do so as a wife, but um, I always make sure, you know, honey, you know, babe, you know, what, what, what can I do for you today to help make it easy on you? Because of course, you know, when we talk about the scriptures that he can find a wife, you know, find a good thing, you know, as a wife, you should be in a position to ease a burden from your husband in, term of, in terms of being a help me for him in whatever way uh, he's being utilized by God. He may not be a man of, of, of God who's actually preaching in the pulpit. He may be, he may, you know, be in the workforce. He may have his own business. And he may be someone who serves in the church. Um, but what way, in what way, as a wife, can you be there to uh, help ease the burden from him in terms of, you know, making the, the the load lighter for him in terms of what God has called him to do in whatever way it may be. And I know that as you know, as, as a wife, you know, oftentimes we can we can be insecure when our husbands are away from from us when they are working, when they are doing ministry, when they're traveling, if they're in ministry especially, um, or whatever it may be. Um, but we have to make sure that we're not nagging, you know, when it comes to uh, being a wife to be there for our husbands, but but to be in a position that that we're sh we're always showing them love and that we're always bringing things exciting, you know, uh, to uh, the marriage in regards to uh, that being ministry aspect. Because of course, I mean, look forward to us, you know, being, um, you know, looking good and you know being healthy and feeling good about ourselves, you know, taking care of our bodies and you know hygiene. All those things are important. Dressing in, in a way that is attractive to him, not to other men, but that you're pleasing, that you you love the way that you are in terms of your appearance, but most importantly, you know, that you're, you know, making things exciting for your husband, you know, there, you know, all those different aspects when it comes to, you know, and I'm not trying to, you know, sound, hope I'm not offending anyone, but as a married woman, you want to make sure that you're keeping things uh, juicy in the bedroom, you know, th those, are, those are things that are very important when it comes to now, marriage that, and ministry. Now, that's going to um, be another topic, yes, the but, juicy part you know, but, of this ministry. But, but you don't want, you know, you want to make sure that as, as a, a new married woman in ministry that you do want to make sure that your relationship with, with Jesus Christ is always first and foremost and that you're taking care of yourself and that ultimately you are making sure that you're meeting the needs of your, your husband and your children, your home, before you go out to, you know, try to tackle the ministry aspect of it out in the world, so to speak, when it comes to being there in the kingdom from that standpoint because you want to make sure that you're, you're meeting the home front first before you, you go out there and say that you're doing ministry because you don't want to be, you don't want to come across as being a hypocrite in that regard. Right. Listen, something, something you said, I kind of like gravitating on, because I really think it's really important that as a woman in ministry, that jealousy not be a part mm. of the ministry. 
uh, the Bible, the scripture tells, you know, denotes says that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. And there are a lot of single and married women in ministry that are jealous towards their their uh, companions. So uh, that's another issue for discussion. Getting rid of that jealous that jealous spirit. Uh, apostle, from a single woman's perspective, just briefly, would you kind of like elaborate to those women that are listening out in our audience uh, that are single and are contemplating you know, that they do already have ministry and how affected they can be while they're in waiting for their Boaz. Just briefly, of course. The best thing I could say uh, from a single standpoint would be as you are working diligently in your ministry and being faithful to what God has instructed you to do, that you prepare yourself, you know, um, making sure that your body is healthy, making sure that um, you're eating properly, you're doing the things that will help you to be that wife that he is looking for, making sure you learn how to not be jealous in areas, making sure that what it is that you expect him to do, you prepare yourself as well, um, that you could be that special woman that he is looking for. Praise God. We've had an awesome conversation. <clears throat> and as you can see, we are dressed for the weather today. We came just dressed down to let you know that even in ministry, you can dress down. Uh, and we're excited about it. So if we could leave something, uh, if you could leave something important, a special to tell the women today, uh, I'd like for both of you to have about a couple of minutes left to, to do that. Uh, from both of your perspectives, would you tell the women something very important that you want to leave with them today to, to just gravitate on that will keep them until next Sunday? Uh, when we come, come on. Uh, Prophetess Rhonda. Well, first, I would just say for those women who are single in ministry and you have a desire to uh, one day become married and, of course, you know, serve in the capacity of, of having a spouse or a husband that you're also serving in terms of ministry, glean from women who are married um, that have successful marriages, you know, women who are actually leading by example according to the Word of God in terms of being a godly wife, a godly woman in ministry as well. Glean from them, you know, ask them questions, learn from them, you know, see how they are serving in ministry as well as how they're serving in the capacity of being there for their spouse, their husband as well. Well, we're running out of time, but we're going to let Apostle Minor say just one uh, word for us. I would say um, while you're waiting on that Mr. Wright, that you would prepare yourself there again in your keeping your house clean, keeping you clean, keeping. Um, your mindset clean, you know, with the things of God and continue focusing on your ministry until God brings him into that play. We are so excited about today's broadcast. We've had some awesome uh, word and some awesome comments that we want to leave with you today. And we pray that we've been such a blessing to you. Tune in on next Sunday as we come back for Right Now Word. Again, I'm Apostle. Ann Jackson from the Nehemiah Worship Center. We're located 120 Wellingford Street in Charlotte, North Carolina. God bless you. Until next Sunday, be blessed.